All right. Strength and materials, folks. Since I cannot be here on Thursday, I thought I'd give you another short lecture demo on shear moment diagrams. We're just going to keep grinding on those. So this is 13, uh, num chapter 13, number 18, B. B is in boy. Um, metric problem. I'm going to work it start to finish, um, including the statics part in case you had trouble with that or didn't didn't remember or whatever, right? Uh, this was a pin, so I just dropped out a X because there is no X force, right? So summing moments, I'll go moment at A. We will concentrate this for the statics part, but then we will, uh, not use it for the strengths part. So concentrate it for the statics part. So it's 15 times six, that's 90. Kilonewtons concentrated, three meters and three meters, right? So my moments about A are gonna be 90 kilonewtons times three meters, that rotates negative. 60 kilonewtons times nine meters, that rotates negative, and then by times the full length, which is six and uh, seven, which is 13. Yep, and that's possible. Set it equal to zero and get us a by. It's like by is positive, leave it here, move that over, move that over. They become everything becomes positive. So we got 90 times three, that's additive with 60. So that's 810, and we divide by the 32. 62.3076 kilonewtons. <clears throat> we have 150 coming down, 90 plus 60, and that. So I just do the subtraction, 87.6923. All right, so the stacks part is done. Uh, then our goal typically is to find the maximum shear. So we draw the graph, V equals zero, bring down the important points, right? So here's the end of the beam. Here's the end of the beam. Uh, there'll be something going on here. Notice it's just really light and you don't even have to do that. Uh, the end of the distribution is here. There's, these are important spots in this shear. And then we just follow the forces. So I'm gonna go up my 87, six, nine, two, three kilonewtons. And then it comes down at 15. So it's gonna come down a total of 90. So it's just barely gonna cross. So I'm gonna put it like right there. It's consistent, right? Every meter comes down 15. So it is a straight line. Horizontal will produce a straight line slope, which will produce some kind of curve, some kind of curve down here in the moment. All right. So this comes down, drops 90. Looks like it's down to 2.3076. Right there into the negative region, right? Then nothing happens. On the beam, there's no loads. Whenever you have that, that's just a straight line. Okay? And then it drops a total of 60. So then it's down into here somewhere at 62.3076. Yeah? And then nothing happens. And again, if you've done it correctly, then it will return to zero, right? Perfect. So we have plus region, we have minus region of the shear graph. 
That's important when we're trying to create the moment. Maximum shear, 87. Uh, uh, killing me. Because that is a force, right? Yeah. All right. Now the moment diagram, which we are going to read right off of the shear diagram. So we're going to read the slopes because that's what we have for these values, right? M equals zero. This is positive slope. This is negative slope in the moment diagram. So positive slope starts here at a positive slope. Then it gets less and less until it crosses zero right there. So that is a parabolic curve and you can just sketch it in, right? So there is a maximum where the shear goes to zero. There's a maximum or a minimum, happens to be a max because we know we're positive. Now it heads negative slope. Notice that negative slope doesn't mean negative moment. We're still positive moment. The deflection curve looks like this. That's all positive. So it just means the slope has gone negative and it has to in order for it to get to here, right? Now, is it parabolic or is it straight line? It is straight line because this is uniform. So that means this is sloped and it's uh, just a little slope. So it's a straight line from there to there. These are called inflection points or changes. And then it's much steeper, Looks something like that. All right, so that gives us our maximum moment. M max is right here. We just have to find it. So that means, again, we have to do uh, some math to figure out this x dimension. We know the height of the triangle, and the moment right here is the area to the left. So we just need this X dimension again. So you use similar triangles. So here's the big triangle that we know everything about. It's six meters here on the big triangle, right? So six meters is two, and I gotta add this to this, right? So I need the 230 and the 87.6923 added together to get 90. That's the big triangle. That's this right here, 90 to 6 meters. And then that, since they share the hypotenuse, we can say, oh, x is to 87.6923. So that gives us our x. So 6 enter 90 divide 87. 0.6923 times 5.846 for x. Meters. That's this distance. Now I can get my maximum moment by going one half the base 5.846 meters times the total height of that triangle, which is 87.6. All right. Looks like 256.33. And that's going to be a kilonewton meter. I think we're kilonewtons, right? Yep. And we're meters. Yep. Maximum. So that then I could use moving to the bending stress equation, which we'll do next week. We're just going to continue to practice these. Okay. Sharing sure, moment diagrams, um, they're little puzzles, and a lot of fun. So work your way through it.